Hey there, no penguin here. I am a rogue player, and this is Let's Build. As the great rogue player Sun Tzu once said, to defeat meta decks, you must first understand them. That's why in this video series, I will take a modern deck, learn it, and give you the tools and understanding you need to defeat the meta sheep. With that said, let's build Flu Wanderees. Before we get started, I just want to say subscribe, please, and it! Welcome to another episode of Let's Build. As you can see, today we are playing Flu Wanderees. Now, for those unaware, Shizu Tiroman is the best deck bar none, and no other deck is consistently topping events. That is, except for Flu. Yeah, believe it or not, Flu may be the hero we've been looking for to fight the Tirlemon Scourge. Of course, there are plenty of people who are against Flu as a deck, some outright hate it, mostly Master Duel players. But me? I don't have an issue with it. I mean, the boss monster is a penguin, what do you want me to say? I like penguins. But enough about that, the deck is here, the deck is winning, so we will go through the deck, explain how the deck works, show you some replays, and once we're done all that, I will show you how to counter Flu. With that said, let's get into the card by card. To start us off, of course, our boss monster, Fluanderese and Mpen. This is a level 10 monster that has the effect when tribute summoned, add a Fluanderese spell trap from your deck to your hand, and then immediately normal summon a monster. What's more important is the floodgate effect it has. While this tribute summoned monster is in your monster zone, your opponent cannot activate the effects of special summoned attack position monsters. And once per battle, if it's battling, you can banish a card from your hand to half the attack and defense of the opponent's monster. Mpen is the main boss monster of the deck, and you can easily see why. Not only does it gain you resources, allow you to summon even more, but on top of it all is a floodgate in it of itself. God, I love Mpen. Next we have Ryza, the Mega Monarch. Flu has the ability to normal summon and tribute summon during the opponent's turn, so being able to bounce back a couple of cards, shuffle them into the deck, what have you, makes for a very good card in the deck. And we have ways to search any level 7 or higher winged beast monsters so we can fit Ryza right into our combo string. Finally, we have Mist Valley Apex Avion. Its effect is quite simple. If a card effect is activated, you can bounce this card to the hand, negate and destroy. On to the little flus, we have Fluorandries and Robina. Now a couple things I want to make note. All of the little Fluanderies cards have the effect, if it would be sent to the graveyard, banish it instead. And all of the Fluanderies normal summon effects have the effect that you cannot special summon the turn you use this effect. Also, they all have the effect that when a Winged Beast is normal summoned and this card is banished, you can add it to the hand. And this is great for just getting back all your materials after you tribute summon, but also to chain block the normal summon effect of a card on the field. So if we're summoning Rabina and we have another flu banished, we could Rabina chain one, flu chain two, and that way we can protect it from things like Ash Blossom, Gamma, the likes. And Rabina's normal summon effect lets you add a level four lore winged beast from your deck to your hand, and then normal summon another winged beast. Eaglin lets you add a level seven or higher winged beast monster from your deck to your hand, and then normal summon another winged beast. Toucan lets you grab a Banished Fluanderese card, add it to your hand, and then normal summon a winged beast. Toucan is great for the grind game. If you're going turn after turn needing to get to your cards, Toucan lets you recycle Fluanderese cards, which is insanely important. Being able to recycle your Fluanderese cards, namely Mpen or any of the one ofs, is insanely effective. And finally, we have Stree. Stree is good. Its effect says target a card in either player's graveyard, banish it, and then normal summon. Being able to banish cards from your opponent's graveyard is always good, but especially so in this meta. Then we have two barrier statue of the storm winds. This is another floodgate that makes it so only wind monsters can be special summoned. Of course, we don't do a lot of special summoning, but we will stop the opponent from doing any special summoning. I play two because it's really easy to out by just hitting over it, and having that second one really makes the difference. Finally, our hand trap, Dimension Shifter. This is basically the reason why Flu is doing so well right now, because it is the best card to abuse and use Shifter with absolutely no worry. You can play this if you go first, you can play this if your opponent goes first, it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect the flu plays. If anything, it helps them by keeping things out of your graveyard and keeping them in the banish zone where they'll be able to add themselves back. It's great and there's really no reason you shouldn't be playing this at 3. 
Then, some consistency boosters. We have Triple Prosperity, Triple Duality. Finally, we are playing Triple Fluanteries and the Advent of Adventure. Now, this works double. One, as a search spell to help unclunk your hands, but second, as a way to dodge interaction. So, if you summon something like a Robina and your opponent infect Veilers, Infibs, you can chain this to banish the Robina, getting it off the field so the effect negation does not apply, search out another Fulon de Riz, and continue your chain because the Robina effect will still go through and will allow you to continue normal summoning. Then we have the best card in the deck, Fulon de Riz and the Magnificent Map. This card is insane. During your main phase, reveal any of your level 1 Fluanderies, banish another name from the deck, and if you do, you just get a free extra normal summon during this turn. That way you can try to start your plays with the Magnificent Map Summon, and if your opponent has a way to interrupt that, you still have your regular normal summon to be able to start a new chain, and hopefully your opponent won't be able to stop that. But that's not all. It also has an effect that if your opponent normal summons a monster, you could immediately just summon a Fool on Reese from your hand, which of course will start a chain. So if normal summoning 20 times in your turn wasn't enough, you could do it during your opponent's turn. Getting on an Apex Avion, bouncing cards with Ryza, the sky is the limit. We're also playing one Necro Valley. Before, players will be playing Mystic Mind, but you know how I feel about that. And I feel like Necro Valley is just fine against the U tier matchup. One Terraforming to search it, then we have Triple Dark Ruler No More. This deck breaks boards really effectively, and Dark Ruler No More just helps that out. Next, we are playing Double D Fisher. I feel like having three is a bit excessive. Two feels like the perfect sweet spot. If you somehow don't draw your shifter, this is a great little floodgate to have. And also, even if you draw into your shifter, this will help keep that banish effect on the field once shifter's effect wears off, which is just great. Then we have one gold sarcophagus. Now, gold sarcophagus is really interesting. Similarly to Flanderies and the Magnificent Map, it can banish one of your little flues to be able to add those back once you normal summon your other flues. But also, this has an interesting interaction with Toucan specifically. So if you don't have anything in the banish zone, or if you really just want to search out a specific flu card, you could use Gold Sark to banish it and then add it with the Toucan. This is especially good when we are trying to add a map, for example, or even one of our one of spell traps. One called by to stop interaction, Flanderies and the Unexplored Winds. This is a continuous spell card, and if you conduct a tribute summon that requires two tributes, which all of our big tribute monsters are, you can tribute by sending one monster you control and a card your opponent controls. This is a very important wording because you can be sending spell, trap, field spells, pendulum cards. You could send anything on your opponent's side of the field to the graveyard as if you were using it to tribute summon. And this effect is not once per turn. So with M-Pen, you can get certain chains off where you are tribute summoning two times a turn. And for one reason, the Explored Winds allows you to tribute your opponent's cards each time you do so. It is insane. It also has a secondary effect that during your main phase, you can reveal up to two Winged Beast monsters in your hand, place them on the bottom of the deck, and then draw the amount of cards you placed. Now, I sometimes forget about this, but that's mostly because you cannot use this effect the turn you activate Prosperity and vice versa. So just something to keep in mind. And finally, Flanderies and the Dreaming Town. This is just a trap card that says Normal Summon. It's pretty good. Being able to, whenever you want during a turn, start a chain is insanely powerful. Map does allow you to get a summon off during their turn, but it's completely reliant on your opponent normal summoning, and anyone who's familiar with the deck will try to work around that, but Dreamy Town doesn't have to worry about that. At any point during the turn, if I see a card I don't like, I can use this effect, start my chain, raise a bounce to them, get another m on the field if they got rid of the first one, whatever I need at the time, this is amazing. And like I said, the extra deck really doesn't matter, but that is the deck. I'm sure a lot of you already knew what Flute does and really didn't need that explanation, but like all of our Let's Build videos, I want to make this a resource for those who do not know the deck and would like to pick it up. But enough about that, let's get into the replays. Let's play Fluanderies. Our first replay is up against Salads. They get to go first, so they're gonna go circle, grab the gazelle, the normal summon lady debug, go ahead and add themselves foxy, go into bailing, bailings, activate, grab sanctuary, activate sanctuary, go spinny, target the bailings, gazelle, special summon itself, 
Gazelle activate effect, go ahead and send Roar. Go into Splash Maze, Splash Maze grab the Gazelle, Spinny from Grave, then we'll Mirage Style Yo here. Activate effect to go ahead and Special Summon out the Falco. Go into our Heat Soul, Heat Soul draw a card from the deck to the hand. Will the Salmon Great, Will the Salmon Great, Special Summon Jack Jaguar. Sunlight Wolf, Falco target the Roar, set it. Sunlight Wolf once again to go ahead and grab Circle, set it, and pass. I get to go now, and ooh, Shifter's a really good top deck here. They'll draw a card, but I'll just go ahead and activate the Fish because why the hell not? They will roar the map, but I do have Robina already. So a Robina, go for Eaglin, Eaglin, summon itself, go for this. We'll go Ryza, Ryza, go ahead and try to send back the circle. Didn't really know it was a circle at the time, but they're going to go ahead and just chain that. But we are getting rid of the Heat Soul here, which is absolutely perfect. We'll go ahead into battle, attack over the Silent Wolf. They'll protect it with the Bailing, and it'll pass turn. They go here. They have the Foxy. Foxy effect. At this point, I am just going to go for the summon. I'm going to go into Rabina. They'll find off the top absolutely nothing. Rabina, activate. Grab the Barrier Statue. Go into the Eaglin. Eaglin, grab the M-Pen. M-Pen, go ahead to grab ourselves a spell and more importantly summon ourselves out the Stormwind from hand. Now Winds is really good here, they go ahead attack over the Stormwinds because they can't do anything. Main phase 2, they will go through here, will summon Great Brain back this, they're gonna go ahead summon back Falco, go into a Baguska of all things, go here and pass. I really can't do anything by summon so I'm going to use the Winds here and I will search out the M pen straight from the deck because I want to use the winds here to tribute over that Baguska. I find ourselves another lap on the top of our deck. We will M pen here, tributing that Baguska so we can continue our chain with the extra normal summon. We normal summon Rabina. Rabina will go ahead and grab Toucan. Eaglin will go ahead and grab ourselves an Apex Avion. We actually got a Toucan here so we can reuse that trap card. Then Toucan and activates, and they basically see that I have more than enough to end game, so they will concede. Our final replay is up against Pendulum, one of the only other few decks that are actually seeing results right now. I get to go first, so Rabina, Eaglin, you'll see the same combo again and again, but it's just so good. And Ben here, go ahead and chain block, but they do have the infib, so unfortunately I kind of just got to sit on M Pen and pass, but I do have the wins in hand for next turn. They get to go here, they're going to go Bambuku, Bambuku, go ahead and grab the Pegasus. They'll use Odd Eyes here to go ahead and search out the Nermorphage car. They'll go ahead and Lust the pendulum lets the pendulum target the Pegasus, then we'll go here into the Phoenix, Phoenix target, destroy it. That way we're going to be able to go into and special summon another Pegasus here from deck to search out our Iris. Beyond the Pendulum can't activate because of the M Pen, they will Pendulum summon here. Phoenix, Phoenix, Pegasus, Sky Iris here, Sky Iris will go ahead and destroy the Lesser Pendulum for another Odd Eyes. They will go into the Xyz to be able to special summon back that Lesser Pendulum that is destroyed to go into Ignister. Ignister will get M Pen off from the field so now they can summon an attack, special summon a Dragon from the deck to go into this, the world ocean, to summon out back the Ignister. It takes soft ones per turn so they can special summon another Dragon Surf from the deck, go into Soldier, then we'll use Odd Eyes to actually special summon. Did you know it could do this? And once again, special summon a monster from the deck. Unfortunately, they have to do it in defense and they don't have access code, so they are just shy on lethal. They're gonna go into Ball, search during the end phase for that, and I get to go off to the races. Now, I'm gonna use this here to completely eat out their field. We're going to Robina into Eaglin, Eaglin into grabbing another M Pen. We'll tribute their spheres for the M Pen. Then we'll get Robina back. We'll use our extra normal summon to go for another tribute summon, getting rid of their soldier. Then attacking for 27, attack for 27. Fortunately, we don't have game here, but with the trap, this is pretty much as good. They're going to eccentric here. We're going to go for Dream, Robina, normal summon. Chain to go here into Eaglin. Eaglin to go ahead and search us another M Pen. Then we're going to tribute out their eccentric because we do not want them to get rid of our winds. Then they're going to go ahead into the storm winds. They'll get to draw two, but two Bistiles against a wind deck is not going to do it. And that was Fluanderies. I'm sure many of you have already seen what Fluanderies is capable of, and I'm sure many of you are sick of it. So without further ado, let's get into how to beat Fluanderies. And here they are, the cards you want to look to side against Fluanderies. 
Right off the top, we have Droll and Lockburn. Now, this is a very bipolar card in terms of how good it is against Flu. If you activate this after Rabina adds a card and we do not have a Tribute Summon monster in hand, you completely end the turn. We cannot do anything. We sit on a level 1 monster pass. It is terrible, and you've basically killed the deck. However, because this card needs to be sent from the hand to the graveyard, if you open Shifter, you completely protect yourself from Droll and Lockbird, so this can either be a complete win against Flu, or you've just drawn a dead card. However, one card that is a surefire win against Flu is Lancia. Stopping the deck from banishing cards absolutely hurts. Keeping Robina, Eaglin, and all of them into the graveyard sucks because you cannot add them back to your hand, and the resource loop really just falls apart if we can't banish cards. And unlike Droll and Lockbird, this just needs to tribute itself. It doesn't care if it's in the graveyard, it doesn't care if it's banished. You just have to tribute this card, the effect will apply, and even under the macro cosmos or the shifter, this is still going to supersede that because it's being applied after the fact, and for that turn, you will not be able to banish, and for that turn, you essentially will not be able to play. This is also the budget option here. You can get high rarity Lancius for as low as a quarter. This is a great card to pick up if you fucking hate the flu matchup. Next, we're going to talk about Droplet. This is a little bit of a weird option. For how we're looking at this, this can also be Dark Ruler No More. Basically, the idea is if you know you're going second against Flu, being able to have cards that will negate the Storm Winds is absolutely paramount to be able to allow you to play. And the reason why I put Droplets in here instead of just Dark Ruler No More is because of Dreaming Town. Being able to respond on the fly to a Storm Winds that has come out because of Dreaming Town is great. I hate this card so much. Prevents you from tribute summoning monsters except for zombie monsters, and because this does not change the attribute of the card in hand, you are not even able to attempt to normal summon any of your tribute summon monsters in this deck, so you basically completely shut out the deck altogether. Finally, there can be only one. I swear, this card is good against literally everything, and I hate it. It has shown up in literally every single one of these I've made so far. Tikbu absolutely sucks. You are playing nothing but winged beast monsters, and this prevents you from summoning more than one. Similarly to Zombie World, this is a card that if you cannot out immediately, you lose the game. A quick shout out to these cards, the Effect Negators. Because of Advent, a lot of these cards like Effect Veiler, like Infinite Permanence, they're not that good. And because of the way that you can chain block in the deck, cards like Ash Blossom and Gamma aren't good. Because if you normal summon Robina, activate Eaglin in the Banish Zone, you can Gamma that technically, but the Robina is still going to be able to go through and get off all the plays. It really doesn't matter one way or another. So while technically these are cards that are really good for stopping the plays from starting, the deck just has so many ways around these kind of cards that they really aren't that much of an issue. But that is the deck. It's been a long time coming since I first laid my eyes on M-Pen, but I have finally played Fluanderees, and I hope this video gave you some insight for playing it or playing against it, because that's the entire point. But shoot me a comment. Let me know what other deck you would like me to tackle this format. We still have another three months until the next big set, so this is going to be a long, long format. With that said, like if you like, subscribe if you want to see more. I am no penguin. Fluanderies fuckboy. Signing out.